Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Jessie. You're watching Reliable Roots and today's video is all about our little house book uh, unit study and this has been a really long time in the making when we first started the whole pandemic for whatever reason our family found a lot of comfort in watching and a lot of joy in watching the Little House on the Prairie shows at night because that was some family friendly um, shows that we could watch and we usually don't watch that much TV but in the past year we found ourselves watching a whole lot more TV than we've ever watched before and that was something that we didn't have to really think too hard about is that some of the videos all honesty, they were quite scary for the kids. So if you plan on watching the, the series, they're on Amazon Prime. You have to watch the commercials to do that, but um, they can be kind of harsh and scary. But that kind of led us into the book series because my girls enjoyed that so much that we ended up being Little House on the Prairie for Halloween. And um, then that transitioned over into the study. So this is a six, uh, six week unit study. And I'm gonna walk you through everything that we did um, and the things I liked and the things I didn't like. So starting with these books, these I loved. <laughs> so if, of course we read the actual chapter books, but I'm gonna start out with these because I do, I have a nine year old, a almost seven year old and a four year old. And these were wonderful for all three, wonderful for all three. I love the, the illustrations, um, they're taken right from the chapter books, but especially for my younger kids, they were, well, even my nine-year-old really enjoyed looking at the illustrations and kind of visualizing more of the, the characters from the story and their, their doll and that sort of stuff. And there's a whole series of them. So some of them I bought and a lot of them I got from the library, so I didn't have to purchase these. Um, but these were really wonderful. So we ended up reading um, about one a day or a few a week. Um, I didn't get all of them, unfortunately, but I got enough that I could I could actually read these with the chapter books. That was our read aloud time and they were really, really wonderful. So these are the um, the Little House books, my first Little House books. And those are, oops, excuse me, those are really great. And I'll leave links to all of the, these materials in the description box below. Now, the next books I want to share with you are, of course, the Little House books. And again, I'm sorry if I keep calling it Little House on the Prairie, but these are the Little House books. I got these secondhand off of eBay. I love them. I love them because I got them secondhand. They are so old. We actually found like a, like some kind of ticket in the midst of these books when we were reading a Little House in the Big Woods that was from like the 1950s. Uh, I think I'm missing, yeah, my daughter is actually reading one of the books. She was reading the Silver Lake book. So I'm missing that from this collection, but it comes in, I mean, considering these are, you know, 60, 70, 70 year old books, I did think for a moment. Um, and it's cool that it has the name, um, but uh, these are 70 year old books and they've been taken fabulous care of until they met my house, unfortunately, because we don't, we don't take care of our stuff like we should. Um, but the books, they can be, we did read a lot of times. They can be kind of difficult depending on your reader. Um, my nine year old loved reading them independently, but I really loved reading them out loud so the other children can share in there. In the, um, in the knowledge of these. So there are some illustrations in them. They're all black and white, um, but man, what what fun we had with these. There's so much information in there that I, I like I said, I didn't read these when I was a kid and I wish I would have because there's so much, well, even as an adult, I like the way that they stored food, the way that they survived winters, the way that they farmed. I mean, there's so much information in all of these books. So we ended up between the course of six weeks, we read three books. So Little House in the Big Woods, Little House in the Prairie, and On the Banks of Plum Creek. We skipped over Farmer Boy because that is about um, Laura Wilder. Uh, uh, Armanzo Wilder and his upbringing and we just want to concentrate on the Ingalls family so we did these three these three and if the girls um, I feel like we've kind of burnt out Little House in the Prairie like I said we've been watching the shows for a year now and we also did Halloween costumes of Little House in the Prairie but um, they they seem to still be enjoying them so we might continue on but uh, I need a little break from them for a while while we go on to our next unit study here shortly. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to share with you, let's go over to our next thing. Oh, this was another, uh, I keep finding these everywhere. Another few of those, um, my first Little House books 
that I did not mention in the other pile. But this book I got, this was about the Oregon Trail. I picked this up from the library. Um, it was okay. It was mostly about the, the Oregon Trail, but I picked it up because it had information on how people were traveling out west and their covered wagons. And I picked up a few different ones of these books to kind of give us some variety that's just not Little House on the Prairie. There was that one, Daily Life in a Covered Wagon. This one followed... This one actually followed the life of the Larkin family, which I believe that they were a real life family, and it has realistic pictures in it as well as they travel out west, um, some of their hardships and different encounters that they had. Um, and that sort of stuff. So we didn't really get too much into these other books um, because, I mean, they were great for reference. We, we touched a little bit here and there on them, but there was so much reading that we did with the actual Little House books. And here's the, oops, excuse me. Here's the last one that I have on that one. This one's called Pioneers. And uh, again, I mean, this is, this is more of reference books. A lot of reading. My nine-year-old enjoyed doing some of this reading on her own time. I actually really like the illustrations in this one, but it is a lot of a lot of uh, reading, and there's some realistic pictures right there as well. Uh, so those were our kind of supplementary. Oh, and then one more. This one was great. Really love this one. Games from long ago. So I bought this one, and we had so much fun with this <laughs> because um, this is. I think that this is great for any <laughs> any unit, <laughs> but this is um the whole book is about games that the kid children used to play without all the many many toys and all the buttons and and these are just fun games and the very we didn't play much of them I, I want to say we played uh, pinch no smiling we played learn by word of mouth which is essentially um, what do you call it like rumor the rumor game kind of thing these are parlor games and we're going to keep looking at this in the future we just didn't have enough time to go over like tons of these but I really really enjoyed it I wanted to get some dominoes that's still on my list of things that I need to get um, but they have such great ideas of different uh, old-fashioned games that you can do now uh, what do we have we have marbles right here I did buy some toys uh, for the children to understand what games they would do. So this is some marbles that I got from Amazon. There's like 160 of them in three sizes, and we went over how to play marbles, and that was so much fun. The girls fought over <laughs> I fought over these marbles so much, but they really enjoyed playing that, and I'm not quite sure if I played them to, you know, the, there's instructions on the side, but I, I think that we kind of cheated a little bit because um, – Marbles is actually, some of these games can be rather difficult, so unless you're used to playing these all the time, it can be kind of difficult. Um, so yeah, we did marbles, and then we also did the classic jacks, and this was another one where we cheated for my girls who have never done this before, and they're young. Um, what we did, we'll try to keep that ball from bouncing off the table. Um, I allowed them to bounce in their right hand and then pick up with their left hand. And they found that a lot easier. Um, I had to practice a little bit to bounce and yeah, bounce and pick up and then catch the ball in one hand. For those of you who haven't ever played jacks or haven't played them in a million years, that is one thing that we really enjoyed. Another thing that we enjoyed is the pick up sticks games. Now these come with instructions on how to play them. I did not read the instructions because I'm dealing with such small children. We kind of made up our own rules. I know the basis, basic gist of these is you throw the sticks down and then you try to pick up one without moving all the others. Hey, I don't think that moved. Well, I see that one moved a little bit, so that would be disqualified. So you try to get as many sticks as you can with that. Again, we kind of improvised, especially for my four-year-old. We gave her all the easy ones so that she would get included in the film. We have tops. These are always a hit. They're always a winner. I got three of them, and that's pretty much all there is to it. I'm sure there's games that you can play with these, but they're just fun to spin around as is. And I got this again from Amazon. Um, let's see what else we have. The Prairie Alphabet. This is modern day prairie, but I thought it matched because we were going over all the prairie stuff. So I found this at the library and this is, um, you know, A is for auction and C is for comb combine clearing, um, but they do have modern conveniences in here that we can have. Let me see, one, there's kite flying and 
Um, J is for the, the jam that you win. And there was even a picture of an airplane. Yeah, right here, there's an airplane. So it's modern day prairie life, which I thought was a, a nice little just um, showcase of back then and now. Um, this is a little house Christmas. I'll be honest, we did not get into this one at all because we did this one instead. And I didn't want to keep saying the same stories over and over. We did Christmas stories. Basically, these are wonderful. The little house chapter books. They are great readers. The print is nice and large. They're still illustrations. But basically, like these are taking all the Christmas stories from different books, not all the books, because there was definitely a Christmas story that we read. I think on the banks of Punk Creek that was not in this, but it does take the stories from the other books and put them into a big Christmas story book. And there's many of these. There's like animal stories and Nellie and Laura, and there's a few more, I'm sure. Um, so these are the Little House chapter books. I really enjoy these. These would be great for independent reading, but the only thing that I would say is that while you're actually reading the real books, they can be a little bit redundant because I had just finished reading the book or the chapter on Christmas story actually in the book and then we start reading Christmas stories and then I also got this from the library. Like I said, we didn't even touch this because I was pretty sure that it's the exact same thing that we just read. It's just bigger and it's in color, um, but it does have really beautiful illustrations. It's the same illustrations, they're just in color. I can show you guys a picture. Yeah. So same illustration. Oh, that was that was such a wonderful Christmas. If you ever read the book, that was that was a really good Christmas. <laughs> okay, so this book, I got this a long time ago. This is the Little House Cookbook. I was so excited to get this. It's a little, it's organized a little bit weird. Um <laughs> there, there's not like straight up recipes that it, it kind of goes through um, the cook's domain food from the woods wilds and waters um, then like after that you have uh, food from tilled fields so it has a lot of great recipes in there and it also has some some behind the scenes information about life in the prairie times and about the books as well so all of that is great really enjoyed reading about all this. The uh, the unfortunate part about this is that my four-year-old and uh, myself have been on a diet since January in order to try to help our skin. See, my skin. <laughs> we both have eczema, so um, we are on an eczema diet book. So there, or eczema, yeah, an eczema detox diet. So we really didn't get around to doing anything out here. Now, I did bookmark this one recipe that we were able to do and modify so that my four-year-old and I could enjoy this. This was blueberry pudding, and this was wonderful. She does not like blueberries in her food, unfortunately, but I loved it, and then I made it without the blueberries, and that part I didn't love, but she did. So <laughs> together, um, this was a really good recipe. So I wish we weren't on our diet. We would have made a lot more food from here because I was really hoping to really utilize that a lot more. And then the Little House Crafts book. This, I planned so many things to do, and we actually only ended up doing like one and a half from it. And that is the hat, Charlotte's straw hat. So Charlotte is the, the rag doll, Laura's rag doll. And so this is made out of rattan and, or uh, oak straws. But I just used this that I got, got a big bunch of it. Um, what, what is this stuff called? This is called raffia, not rattan, raffia. And um, this was a little bit more challenging than I expected it to be, especially for the girls my age, maybe middle school. We, we will definitely come back to this unit study in the future. But um, for m my girls' ages, <laughs> I think this was mine. They, they did the, the top part, and I ended up having to do the sides. Um, so this they decorated it with flowers. I took, or they lost the flowers. They got a lot of play out of these hats with it. They put them on all their dolls, and it was a wonderful, wonderful craft. It, it was just ended up being that I did most of it for all three of them. Um, so it was more time consuming for me, and that's why we really didn't get to the other crafts. Oh, excuse me, the other crafts in this book. Um, my my nine year old did start on the bread cloth. This one right here. She started to do the embroidery cloth, but that is also time consuming for her, but she's still going to work on that and she's still going to finish that one up. She just hasn't yet. The tassels I wanted to do with my first grader because I think that that would have been an easy project for her. 
and I still want to do that, but again, we just ran out of time. So that is the Little House Crafts book. Um, let's see what else I can show you. This book we did not get around to at all, but I wanted to share it with you. Prairie Girl, The Life of Laura Ingalls Wilder, just kind of a biography of, um, of her life. We did not get to that book at all, but I was really happy that we got to this book. I bought this book. I love these books. These are so good. Who is Laura Ingalls Wilder? Has wonderful illustrations in it. They're all in black and white, but this kind of explains her entire life. It was a little bit confusing because I didn't realize that her life was actually kind of different from what she wrote about it because she left some things out. And then, um, so trying to keep up, they moved around a lot. So trying to kind of keep up with where they moved to and stuff. I mean, it's, it's kind of the same, but I want to say the Little House books are classified as a fiction because um, she did change quite a bit of things to, um, to accommodate. Oh, excuse me. Okay. So that is Who Was Laura, Laura Ingalls Wilder. That's I got another one of these books for our next unit study that we're doing a gardening unit study. So I'm really, I really love these books. And then this one I picked up from the library. You wouldn't want to be an American pioneer. This was funny. It has like cartoon illustrations that I really enjoy. I like these kinds of art, uh, art illustrations. They're just fun. So especially explaining the hardships of life it's much nicer to do it in a cartoon kind of form like this so again this is a lot of like the Oregon Trail um, but it explains just going out west and living in a covered wagon and the hardships that the people all faced um, you know just simple things oh this was so interesting look, look at this simple things like crossing the river look at what they used to do so you cover the base of your wagon with buffalo skins and float it over. Like I, that was fascinating to me. <laughs> and then, okay, let me make sure that I got all this right. Finally, this is my favorite thing that we did. And I say we, I'm mostly saying me. <laughs> oh, you, I can't put it all on the screen. Here she is. So this is, um, her name is Fancy Nancy, <laughs> but she is transformed into Prairie Girl Fancy Nancy. I recently found this pattern offline. I want to show you where I got it from. All the links will be in the description box below. But this is this is the Prairie Rose uh, by Thimbles and Acorns. And so there's a couple different options here. But this is basically you're going to make a dress. And this is the bonnet. And she also comes with a petticoat, which I have not made yet, and an apron. So I did most all of this. <laughs> we'll put it sideways so she fits in the screen. Um, but the apron has cute little pockets on it, and I'll take that off and show you the actual dress. So, again, we already made Halloween costumes in Little House in the Prairie style. My daughter wrapped a ribbon around her. <laughs> so, what, um, I, I just love this because now she has, she has Little House in the Prairie, and she has a, a doll outfit for Little House in the Prairie as well. And here's the bonnet. That's the final thing of the bonnet. Now, the only thing about this is that, again, this was going to be a... A child sewing project I wanted to try to get my nine-year-old into learning how to sew patterns and that sort of stuff did not happen and <laughs> not like I planned at all so this ended up being my creation now she did she did do a little bit of sewing but she wasn't happy with her sewing so I did I did the great majority of this but I still was really happy with it I still I don't know if I'm gonna make the petticoat or not because as it goes is that um, I have three children and this was supposed to be a group project and it turned out to be a mom project so now i have to make three of these for everybody but still it's worth it these are so cute and they match their their halloween costumes so i was really excited about that okay guys that's all i have for you today i hope that you enjoyed this video if you did please give it a big thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and i cannot wait to share more about what is going on with our next unit study as we are getting into the garden i will see you guys next time bye